Hey guys, my name is Kendrick and welcome to ENFP Mail. Today I get a chance to interview Sarah DeHond. Did I say your last name correctly or did I say that wrong? Yes. It's, it's okay. It's good enough. Okay. Um, so Sarah, welcome. Thanks for doing this interview. Thank you for, for having me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, and so Sarah, you are an INFP, and, but what kind of yeah. INFP are you? What is your... Uh, in the... Up, yeah. In, in your... Yeah. In that, yeah. Yeah. So I am a double feminine uh, INFP. And I um, consume, sleep, blast, and play. Oh, I think I wrote down your, your notes completely wrong. Okay. I'll have to change my, change my notes. So you said you consume, sleep. Yeah. And then what's, what's the next one? Blast. And play last. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I got that completely wrong. <laughs> That's fine. I'll... I'll change, I'll, I'll make some notes then. Um, mm. So you're a double introverted INFP then as a result. Yeah. Yeah, so how did you feel when you got your results back from Cave and Scan? Oh, it, well, they are so kind. And I really um, appreciated the, the thought that they had put into it. And yeah. what they described um, fit me so well. And... I think I have misinterpreted certain functions before. And when I got my type correctly, I could understand a lot more about the system and MBTI in general. Um, when you said you understood the functions better, um, can, can you elaborate on that a bit? Um, yeah, like, I'm not sure I could distinguish from like the the internal decider and the external decider before okay and uh, yeah like those concepts felt rather muddy to me yeah how they have been described before and like if you like i i thought that i would be a type that like to narrow down so i think i, I then um misinterpreted fi for ni because it's not that clear in um, in most places where you read about it i think so did you figure out that you don't like to narrow things down like <laughs> uh well i'm so proud of when i do <laughs> oh okay so you were kind of peacocking before when you said i like to narrow things down this is what i do but turns out that's not actually what you do that's something that you discovered is that is that right then or yeah, it's it's more something that I'm like, wow, I can I can do that, and uh, and I find I like I put a lot of value on things that are concise and on the point uh, because that's difficult for me. So I'm I, I really put in the effort to do that, but it doesn't come natural to me. When when you were younger, did you um? Were you super scattered and all over the place, kind of? Um, or, or not really, never? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's scattered on certain areas. And then, um, like, yeah, like messy room and music all over the genres and, and stuff like that. But I didn't think that that was so important. Like, that's just... Yeah, <laughs> uh, I didn't want to define myself around those things, really. <laughs> D does that make any sense? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you just didn't think it was important. Like, it's not a big deal. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I get, I get it. Cause like my my girlfriend, you know, we live together, and she makes a huge mess in in our living room. And then like I'm telling, her, I'm getting a headache, right? I'm like, oh my god, can you please like you know, put your stuff on the side and then she'll be like, it's not a big deal. You know, this is not a big deal. Like having a mess is not a big deal. And I'm like, yes, it is. It's a big deal. It makes, it makes you feel like, makes you feel like things are mess. Like, it's like the way I see it is like how you, the way your room is, like if it's messy, that's how it is inside your head. That, that, that's just my, that's just my, like my opinion, you know, it's like a reflection. Yeah. It's a reflection of like, 
like inside you. So I, I don't know, but that's just my, my opinion. I don't know if that, that resonates with you, but definitely not with my girlfriend because she makes a big mess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, the thing is that I'm not so comfortable with my mess anyway. So it's because I'm, um, so as I'm movable with a tribe, I try to have it really neat and nice if people visit. Oh, okay. But then when I'm alone, it's rather messy. It's a, it's a, it's a tornado when you're alone. When people come over, it's sparkling clean. Yeah. No, not sparkling clean, but That's better. Cleaner, cleaner, better. I see. Um, so let's talk about your, your play last. So um, do you feel like having that play last gets you in trouble sometimes? Or do you feel like like you would like to develop that more? Um, so can you, can you elaborate yeah. on that? I would like to develop that more. So that that would take me more into some public speaking or some, like some somewhere where I would have to be a bit more punchy as a tribe, I guess. More out there. Um, yeah. But it, they, like the way that Shannon and Dave described it was that that it's like I'm, I'm also uncomfortable with other people's punchy from the tribe. So, and that's, I would also like to be able to handle that much better. So how do you, how do you react to it when someone, like, let's say, you know, you, let's say you, you know somebody in your, either a friend or someone from work or just someone in your social circle and they have masculine, you know, extroverted decider. So like masculine T or FE. And they're trying to tell you what, what you should do or how you should live your life. Like, how would you react when they start doing that kind of stuff? Well, nowadays I have more distance, but oh, okay. <laughs> uh, 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 and I can handle that in in uh, better. But um, I, I can either either become like take that personally and start maybe some sort of weird argument um, or I would just fall silent and not speak with them anymore. Oh, just, just cut them out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, the, the Swedish culture, it's kind of very individualistic, right? Like strong focus on, on individuals. Is that right? It's quite like that. Yeah. So it's like yeah. a very, very IP kind of, IP kind of culture then yeah but they also have like they have that at the same time they have the we call it Jante law a law Jante law um, and it's like everybody has to be mediocre at the same time oh what, what, what does that mean that everyone has to be mediocre yeah um, just to be mediocre like nobody uh, can believe that they are better than anyone else so it's a virtue to be selfless and helpful and not believe that you are anybody so it's a it's a weird contradiction because they want you to be an individual but they also don't want you to think so highly of yourself yeah yeah okay that that is it's kind of strange and then um, i i heard in sweden yeah. you guys really fight to make sure that no one's invading your personal space like your personal space is like it's, it's, it must be protected at all times, at all costs. I, I don't know. I, I, just, I just heard about that. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, yeah, I, I guess so. It, it's different. Um, like you, you have the blinds down. That's very normal. Yeah. I know that I lived in the, the Netherlands for two years. Yeah. And they, um, they have the blinds up, but they don't share their like they don't have a database for personal numbers where everybody can access that. But here in Sweden, everybody can access your personal number. Uh, and, and like those kind of data is rather available in our country. So yeah. there is no um, protection there. For people it seems people to trying to sell you something? <laughs> huh? Protection from people trying to sell you something, you mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it could be that. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, keep going. 
No, but uh, do you want to talk about these things or MBTI or are you going to tie it back to? <laughs> I, 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 I am, I'm tying everything together. Don't worry. There, there's there's, there's, uh, there's yeah. something for everything that I'm, I'm asking you. There's, it's not like... Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm just, I'm trying to understand you better because, you know, it's, it's not just, you know, personality, right? It's also cultural. Um, mm-hmm. I, uh, I was reading, um, there's, doc, do you know Dr. Dario Nardi? Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I was um, I was watching one of his interviews, and he said that they did like you know the brain scan of different individuals, right? So I forget which exact personality type that they did a brain scan with, but he said that they did a brain scan from one particular personality type in North America, and they did a brain scan on one particular person in Taiwan of the same personality type and they were quite different. So mm. that's why I'm asking you all these cultural questions is because even though you're an INFP, you're sweet, you're like a Swedish INFP. So, you know, you have a lot of yeah. cultural, um, a lot of your culture affects the way you think. You know, I've, I've actually mm-hmm. noticed that when I have been interviewing people who are from Europe or North America, USA, Canada, you know, I mean, it's, it's all very different, right? Like there's, even though you're the same type, there's like a massive difference. Uh, just from what I've noticed, that's why I'm asking you this question. So if you're if you're curious, that that's why I'm curious. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. But yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there's absolutely cultural conditioning. Yeah, because because like I mean, you could be an IP, but let's say you live in in China, and I I would say China is a very EJ kind of culture. Then you mm-hmm. you would be more balanced then as an IP, you know, because just because you're being forced to use it, right? So you know, mm-hmm. so it's that's kind of like where I was getting at with that. But uh, well, let, let's continue on. Let's talk about your. Um, let's talk about your demon TE then. Um, so you have feminine TE and it's a demon. So how how does that play a role in your life? Yeah, I, I, I like the way that they described it, Shannon Dave. They they made it sound like the play and the TE was about the same thing that I had trouble with. Okay. Um, so that's the. Uh, I, I don't really want to ask the tribe what, what they, they think about things. Oh, <laughs> come. <laughs> it's a lot about me, me, me. Oh, you, you, don't, you just don't care. That's the, that's the. I like even just going for an education. Yeah. Then I have to consider other people's, um, other people's already contained studies and I would rather do my own kind of studies. Yeah. Yeah. And would you say that's because of your masculine FI then? Yeah. And that I'm so, uh, both have consume and sleep first. I think so. That I want to, I want to collect for myself and I want to make my own evaluations of that information. And with T, T, uh, with, uh, FI that becomes rather, um, yeah, in my own bubble of what I'm observing. Right, right. That makes sense. Um, what what sort of, what sort of line of work are you doing? Um, now I'm working with in, in journalism. Oh, okay. Editing and uh, yeah, now I'm writing for some concert and scene um, stuff. So you have to go on site then to gather information, and then you no. you don't do that part. You you just edit no okay. no no i just go online and i look for everything that's upcoming events and i collect it oh i see i see so you don't gathering. <laughs> you're getting oh I, I see what's happening you're not using play together you're using just just uh you know kind of like the internet your own computer just just doing your own research yeah. in your own little bubble instead of like going out there and gathering from the tribe or or other people you could say that's not, that's yeah. not, yeah, I see, I see, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I know I, 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 I haven't done any studies for it, so it's not like a passion of mine, so. Oh, no. so it's not, you're not passionate about journalism then? No. no, I mean, it's fun, but yeah. What would you rather do then? Like, Don't ask me that question. <laughs> okay. It's like, I don't know what I want to do. I, that's, uh, it's, it's a really, it's a conundrum. Okay. I, yeah, it's it's kind of a 
it's 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 kind of funny because you know they they assume that all IPs know exactly what to do with their life, right? Because it's like I know myself, I know myself really well, therefore I know mm-hmm. what I want to do. So it's I, I guess that's where you're saying that's kind of ironic. Mm-hmm. That, that, but if, yeah. if, if but if you were to guess, what do you think you would like? Yeah. Would, would writing, you, like I would like to write maybe something okay. and yeah something with psychology or the human psyche in some way or the other i know infps are really good writers because from from what i've noticed infps tend to go to that to that field writing like a lot of the mm-hmm. famous infps are always writers like um you know jk rowling for example like harry potter or mm-hmm. even the guy who made game of thrones you know he's he's a writer and <laughs> You know, these are all I know piece, right? Like, um, even like a uh, long time, you know, Lords of the Rings, the, the writer for that is also an INFP. So it seems like INFPs mm-hmm. like to write fantasy novels. <laughs> that's that's just what I've I've noticed. So for you, is it purely that you want to do nonfiction writing, or is fictional writing something that you're also fascinated in? No, I I don't think that I'm cut out for for that. Not for fiction, just mainly nonfiction is kind of your your area that you yeah. Would... yeah some inspiration or yeah some something like that mm-hmm. self help also is something that you'd like to do yeah yeah I think so in that kind of area mm-hmm. now since getting your your um, results back from David Chan have you taken the time to practice using that TE a little bit. I'm letting it digest and I'm getting a lot of um, ahas yes. around that. And that's uh, that's really fantastic. So I'm really, really glad that I did the typing. I, I think since you're doing these interviews, I think that's helping you use your play more. Because like when, when you do an interview, it's very, it's I would, I would say it's play heavy. It could be blast heavy. So you would be forced to either mm-hmm. use your blast or your play, right? And both both are your demons, so then you get a chance to yeah. play, uh, both of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I end up blasting instead of playing uh, when I have to actually produce something. So. Now you do have double activated SI. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, both the FI and SI is uh, double activated, so. Um, I mean, that would also make sleep uh, double activated. And that's more that I see that the the inner world, or the processing is something that I do maybe too much on. That I should probably think that, well, there's only so much that I can process before I I, I have to go out and actually do something. And it's okay to not be processed uh, and do something. Can you kind of walk us through how your internal processing work? Like, do you do it? Like, do you just sit down on your couch to process or do you, are you doing it when you're doing errands at home or cooking or, or something? Or how does that, when do you use that sleep? Uh, I think it's quite all the time, but, I can also focus and do it, and then it's uh, it feels more effective. It's to check in what's what's going on in inside, what I'm feeling, um, what I'm sensing in the body, and naming that, and um, yeah, going through that over and over. Sometimes you can watch what kind of uh, events are playing inside your head of past events that isn't uh, processed yet. But it's, it's, uh, it's very important to find tools to do that because you can also just have the same one playing, 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 and you're not getting through. So, so you're, yes. you're, you're banging blocks inside your head, essentially. Like you're, mm-hmm. you're, you're running over the same concept in your head over and over again. And you're trying to figure something out. Is that how you're doing it? I'm a little bit. Confused. Yeah, it's memories mostly, and the, uh, then the emotions that I feel in relation to those uh, memories. Yes, yes. 
that goes over and over and um yeah but you can also just wallow in that as well and that's not really helpful yeah let's, so let's talk about the wallowing thing do you get do you feel like sometimes you get stuck in that wallowing like you're in an endless loop almost not anymore but i have when you were younger is that yeah mm -hmm. how did you get out of that endless loop inside your sleep world creating new experiences and like more um a varied um emotional experience uh, library let's say that so going to the library is how huh? you, i guess consuming is how you break out of it like just going going to get new information yeah um but not just because you can just consume your own inner world as well yes so it's really to uh, put yourself in te and do um, do something different to experience something different as well gotcha um mm. i want to ask you about um dating so do, do you find, when you dated in the past do you always date ejs then you know because that that's kind of like the stereotype um, i as a as i'm so new in, in in like the i'm not really sure about the people that i have typed that that it's actually true okay but i believe uh, my ex was an EP, an ESTP. Oh, okay. Um, and how was that? Did it, was he a tribe of himself ESTP then? Would you say? Or no? no? <laughs> He's also a self above tribe also, you would say? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so how did, that, how did that work out? Because you're both self above tribe, right? Yeah. Um, I think that his last, last, um and play higher than me but he he um well it ended up me sort of doing everything because i am like i i am obliging the tribe i'm i feel obliged to do what other people need okay so i easily take care of things even though it's really taxing so do, do you hate it obliging to the tribe yes yeah <laughs> <laughs> so freeing to say that <laughs> yeah yeah that that's okay there's, there's nothing wrong with it that's fine <laughs> yeah but it's only when i perceive that to be a real um obligation if i can shift the perspective of seeing that something that i want to do then it's much easier i see <laughs> so if, if it's like uh let's say you're doing errands in the house that's okay then like let's say oh okay someone has to clean the dishes someone has to you know uh, sweep the floor, you know, that's, that's, that's okay. That's not a big deal then or how? It, oh, it's horrible. Oh, it's horrible. If, if you're, if you're two people at home, I, I don't like that. I'm the one doing that. No. Okay. Uh, did you guys live together or did you live separately? Oh, we lived together for nine years. Nine. Oh my, wow. That's a long time. Eight, eight years. Yeah. Hmm. Wow, that's a long time. And, um, did you guys, share the errands at home or did you split it up like i get i do this you do this or is it just you doing all the stuff uh towards the end uh, it was more balance so at first it wasn't <laughs> wasn't balanced then. <laughs> sorry so at first it wasn't balanced like one one of you is doing no that. no 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 yeah uh sorry uh yeah, so no, I'm I'm just making a, a guess here that at first you were doing most of the housework. Then is that is that right? Yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. then, I guess as as mm -hmm. you started dating longer, you were able to let him know that it's not fair. <laughs> I guess. Oh, you're drawing assumptions, but yeah. no, we um we moved in quite fast because he came from the Netherlands. Oh. And, okay. um, pregnant rather early and um he didn't know sweden and swedish so he couldn't find a job and didn't want to uh, really look for a job so that's more that kind of also the circumstantial part of it yes yes gotcha well, it feels so revealing to talk talking about these things but, yeah 
Okay, mm-hmm. well, I mean, if you don't want to talk about it, it's okay. We don't, we don't, I'm just kind of. <laughs> it's what, it's okay. Know, yeah. <laughs> um, so they, they mentioned that INFPs, well, double observers in general, have problems with fear, or not fear, with pain. Um, so mm-hmm. double deciders have problems with, with fear more than pain, and double observers have problems mm-hmm. with pain more than fear. It's not like you don't have problems with both of them, but one is more prominent than the other. At least that's what I heard Dave said in one of his videos. Mm. Um, would you agree with that? Yeah. I have contemplated that, but I talk, like, I talk about fear and pain, and I'm not sure that I distinguish them in myself in that same way. And also that I have, maybe because I, ha- I divide emotions quite a lot, then I, um, uh, I feel both quite a lot. I, um, but usually if I'm, if I'm talking about discomfort for people, I will clump both fear and pain together because it's, it serves the same function for, for them. So I don't see the, um, the real need to distinguish them if I'm talking emotions in, in general senses. Yeah, I don't know. Do you, do you feel that that's for you? Um, well, I'm a double decider, so fear is definitely something that's constant for me. Like, uh, at any given time, I'm always paranoid about something. You know, there's always that. It's always like, it's almost my companion. You know, fear is my companion. Like, mm-hmm. I, 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 it's hard for me to relax because I'm always thinking about something in the future. And if I perceive something that's not right in the future, then I have that feeling mm-hmm. of anxiety. And I have to make sure that my actions in a moment will alleviate that problem in the future. The problem is the future is mm-hmm. always changing too, right? So it, it's, it's kind of like a blind paranoia too, because I mean, like I'm not a fortune teller. How can I see the future? But, mm. but that like, cause I have lead NE, I'm always looking in the future nonstop, like 24 seven. I, I almost don't have any control over it. It's just automatic. And mm. as a result of always looking at future, I, always feel like, okay, this area here, I need to fix something today so I can make that future better. So there's always that constant self pressure to go fix something in a moment that will fix the future. So it, it, I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's kind of like uh, <clears throat> the struggle with NE first. So I was kind of wondering for you, because you are not, you're a double observer because I I've interviewed double observers before and I've also spoken to you know, a lot of double observers in my life and seen kind of like how, what they were paranoid, paranoid over. Mm. And I've seen people like ESTJs that I've met in my life who were scared to exercise because they don't like to feel sore afterwards. You know, after you go to the gym, you're sore, right? So they don't want to be sore after going to the gym. So they don't go to, to work out. And I'm thinking to myself, that, that's silly. You need to work out because, you know, you need to stay fit and healthy, right? You know, like not be, mm. but then when you talk to a double decider and they get sore after going to the gym, it's a different story for them. There's like, Oh my God, this is awesome. I feel sore. That means I had a good workout. I had a kick-ass workout today. And you know, so like very different um, opinion on, on pain, right? Like, so that's physical pain we're talking about. Um, Mm. Like even emotional pain, you know, like, like for me, like, like, um, like I'll give you an example. Like when, when I was single and I was trying to, you know, ask girls out on a date, right? Like, like for me, I would be more scared of approaching a girl to ask her out than actually doing it. Like when, when, when I actually did it, and if let's say I get rejected, the rejection doesn't hurt that much. It, 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 it does for like a, you know, for a moment or like a few hours or maybe a few days, but it, it doesn't, that the pain of that emotional rejection wasn't the problem. The problem was perceiving the future that's going to happen, kind of like the events that would lead into asking that girl out. And then what would happen if I get rejected? It's like the thought that scares me more than the actual, when, when it actually happens. When it actually happens, I'm actually okay with it. So it's, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's weird that way. It's like a weird <clears throat> contradiction almost. But then I, I interviewed an INFP before and he said, no, thinking about asking, look, I, I interviewed an INFP male before and he told me when he was thinking about asking a girl out, it didn't bother him at all. Like there was no fear. But then when he was face to face with that person, that's when he got freaked out, right? He's like, oh my God, like he started thinking about the emotional pain or the, the, the rejection, if the rejection would occur, mm-hmm. and he 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 would he couldn't handle it. Like that's something he couldn't handle. Like mm-hmm. that emotional pain it was too much. So 
I thought that was kind of fascinating. That that's kind of like where I kind of mm. we're distinguishing the difference between someone that um, is 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 having problems with fear more than pain, and the vice versa. Mm. Someone ha- that has mm-hmm. problems with pain more than fear. That's why I'm asking you. What do you think for you, for yourself? Like when you did your sleep process, would you say you're trying to avoid that that pain more, or or that or that fear is kind of like what? much more constant uh, I feel that fear is quite constant um, I also have anxiety like you mentioned but that seems to also be connected to into like intuition saviors yes. um, so um, and I have both the before going up and seeing the possibilities of how difficult that will be Yes. I mean, sometimes I can convince myself with some positive outcomes, but when I'm, and also like your, like the person that you talked about, when I'm in the situation, sometimes it feels like I'm not there anymore because it's too, too dangerous um, to be in the moment. And I can't, like afterwards, I can't remember what really happened uh, sometimes. Is, is that um, the feminine as I did? Like you don't remember what happened? In- yeah, it could be. Maybe. Um, seems to be a protection mechanism. I, I don't know. Um, yeah. But, and I, I feel calm with my emotional pain because I know that I can process it. Um, but still, of course, rejection is really uh, that that's painful. Um, just just talk, since we started this interview, um, I don't want to put you on the spot, <clears throat> but I just noticed something. No. So if, if you're yeah. okay, I'll mention it. Um, I, I noticed that you were you were observing, <laughs> you were gonna say something. Hmm? Yeah. So because I was just noticing with with the play last uh, with, with 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 anything. Um, so. I just noticed that you don't like to share stories about yourself. Um, and that's, that's very directly to play last. Like you, you don't like to talk about yourself or share stories with yourself. You'd rather talk about a concept to make it objective as opposed to making it personal. Um, so, you know, play, play is kind of more sharing like a personal story, like kind of be more vulnerable, you know, with, with, with yourself and like, you know, um, I have a I have play as 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 a savior. So for me, it it's not like like I, I've always kind of been fascinated with people who's very secretive or people who 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 don't want to share about their personal life because I, I I feel like for me it's weird. Like why 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 would you want to be so secretive? Like it doesn't doesn't it doesn't really make any difference, you know? And I, at least that's my perspective mm-hmm. uh, because I have like I have play as a savior. So. For me, if I share something personal with myself, it's not a big deal. I'm like, okay, whatever. And if people reject me over that, yeah. I'm like, okay, well, you know what? That's not my problem. If you don't like me for me, then you know that's then you know that's that, that's that's your problem, you know? Because I'm just being me, right? Like, mm-hmm. if, if I'm gonna tell you about me, you know, let's say, like, you know, if you want to build bonds with people or you want to build like a connection with someone, you need you do need to share about yourself, right? Like, you need to talk about mm-hmm. yourself, and then the other person will make a decision. Okay, do I like this person? Uh, do I relate to this person? You know, because cause then, then, then they would share about themselves at, at the same time. And then you would have kind of like a play conversation then, which is like, I'm sharing about my life, you're sharing about your life. And then now we're building a rapport, mm-hmm. rapport, essentially. Yeah, um, I, I think that if, if we took off the recording, that probably would happen. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. Okay. Okay. And, and I, I write the quite personal stuff online about me yeah. and... I think I I talk a lot about me, me, me. Yes. Um, and what I've been through, and yes. uh, I think like the whole uh video to Dave and Shan was about my past life and uh, um stuff that happened there. Yes. So. So so you're okay as long as it's, uh, in, it's in a private setting. If it's like a pub, more public setting, yeah, kind of like the the issue. And what I'm what I'm um, it depends also because you you connect with something uh, like a concept that I'm I'm seeing, and then I'm 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 looking at myself and I'm saying hmm I don't think that they fit, and then I I don't know what 
information I'm going to give you because I'm not seeing the connection sometimes. And then I, I don't know what personal stuff I can give. I see. You know what? I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I also <laughs> think it's your feminine SI because it's like, you, you, it's, it's, I think you need more time to, to sleep process it before you can give the information. But like, you know, sometimes when you do an mm -hmm. interview, it's right in a moment, right? And you, you need to access that right away. And you're like, ah, I need some time to access it. You know, it's not like mm -hmm. I can access it right now. Um, have you ever thought of doing Toastmasters, by the way? I don't know if you guys have Toastmasters in Sweden, right? What is that? Toastmasters. It's an international... Toastmasters. Toast yeah. Oh, I had heard. Uh, no. <laughs> do you think that I should be a Toastmaster? But do, oh. do, do, do you know what it is? Do you know what Toastmasters is? Maybe you should explain. Maybe I'm misunderstanding. So Toastmasters is a, it's a international organization. They have it in all the countries in the world. And what oh. they do is you come in and you practice public speaking, essentially. So basically, oh, okay. so basically what happens is you go in there um, and then there's, there's many ways that, they, that you get to practice public speaking. So number one, it's mm -hmm. a prepared speech, right? So you come in there and you do like a five to seven minute speech on something that you prepared ahead of time. So that's, that's mm -hmm. the first one. The second one is improv, improv. So that means you go to the front, you don't know what you're going to talk about, and they're going to give you the topic on the spot, and you have two minutes to talk about that topic that they give you. So you don't know what it is, but it gives you practice to kind of speak mm -hmm. in a moment and access your memory in a moment in a very fast mm -hmm. environment. And it's very mechanical yeah. because you get to practice it over and over again. And event, like, I've seen the most introverted person actually improve really quickly too. So it's not like, you know, it, mm -hmm. it, it works for everybody. Um, mm -hmm. and then, you know, it, it, you, you have to do other stuff too, like, um, keeping track of time, for example. So let's say you have a bad concept of time, then you, they, they give you like a, a clock and you have to time, time, time other people talking and you make sure that you're paying attention to the clock. So it practices your ability to keep track of time. And then there's also evaluation. So I don't know if this is something like I found evaluation to be the hardest for me. You have to listen to that person talking get all the information about what they're saying and find a way that you can give um, an advice to improve their, their speech, essentially. And, and sometimes it's really hard because there's seven, let's, let's say there's five people doing improvs and you only have two minutes to write down quickly um, the things that they did well and the things that, that they should improve upon. And you have to write very quickly. You have to be very, listening very with, with super focus. So it's a lot of like try it's a lot of play. That's why when, I, when, when I'm like, talking to you now, mm. I'm thinking, oh my God, that's like the perfect way for you to really skyrocket <laughs> your play is just to do something like this. Because mm -hmm. you know? then you get to practice mm -hmm. improv, yeah. prepared speech, and evaluating other people. You know? So from a personal development perspective, I think, I think for you, this is like the, the gold, the golden ticket you know? <laughs> to, to round mm. yourself out. It's a good tip. Yeah. Um, uh, let's talk about double decider, uh, double observer. Sorry, mm -hmm. so you have relative balance between chaos and control. Would you say that's about mm -hmm. true for yourself? Or yeah, it's not like the biggest issue in my life. Um. Okay, so you do have consume. So you you have consumed before sleep, meaning you crave freedom more than control slightly um can you talk more about that so that I, you said that i value freedom more than control slightly yeah. slightly yes yeah oh well <laughs> you, you you gave me new concepts that i have to think about okay. um <laughs> <clears throat> like not not all of these have been uh, presented to me in the classes let's see um like, yeah, but I, I connect, like when you say that, that I value, uh, I don't, oh man, I don't know, how would, how would you see that? I, so, because you think that, because it's sleep that wants to lock in on things, or no? Um, it's mainly because it means you're using your NE more than your SI, so, um, not, not using it anymore in your SI. So you do, you're kind of strange in a way that you have double activated SI. So 
so it seems like you're, mm. you're using your SI more, but your NE is your savior, right? So your NE is being used. Yeah. So um, NE is all about gathering or obs obsession with freedom, right? While SI is um, control or organizing known information, known facts. Mm. Um, so because you have NE over SI, it means you slightly want to gather more and you slightly want freedom more than control or organizing mm. your known information. Uh, I was kind of hoping you could share some stories where you were doing slightly more of that freedom, that control. If you don't have any, that's okay. Um, you're, you're really balanced though. Yeah, but you don't need the, these questions beforehand to, to, uh, um, <laughs> to prepare something. Um, I don't know. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, it's okay. <laughs> I know that the, the feminine or the masculine FI makes me sh like, that's the only thing that I can know that I, I go, I go along, go along with other people and then like sort of don't control me. Um, towards the end, but yeah, that, can, yeah, I, man, I don't know. I have to know more about that to, to see how that fits with me. Yeah, no worries, no worries. I think, yeah, he's... This is me also respecting the in information. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, um, I really want to get it right, and I don't want to just assume things, so... Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay. You don't want to, I guess, blast first, <laughs> like, uh, like INTJ. Yeah, I mean, I could have jumped up, off on something there, and that would make me maybe misunderstand the point. Yeah. Uh, okay, let oh. Really taking in what you're saying so yeah, yeah it, it, it's really hard because you're super balanced in the middle because like you even though your ne is, is before your si um your si is double activated right so it in a way it's almost pretty much being used as much as your ne you know so you're you're actually yeah. like you're almost like dead dead balance in the middle like super super balanced right in the middle like it's yeah, yeah, they had trouble with with uh, knowing which one was above the other. See, how how did they find like out? Looking at, well, they they still saw. I, I don't know why, but they uh, Shan was sure that I was fi uh, f i n e, and uh, Dave was contemplating f i s i. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's really hard. It's really hard because it's 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 so close, right? <laughs> Yeah, but I think that I'm more uh, looking at the connections first. Oh, so you do use your any a lot to, to find connections. Yeah, I, so that I think that's that's the way that I can see that, that I, I see a lot of connections, then I build the data. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Sarah, so we're going to wrap up the interview pretty soon. Um, do you have any questions for me about... We we have all all our functions are the same, so it's like yeah, I'm an ENFP, <laughs> so it's, it's, they're exactly the same. Um, yeah, do you feel similar or do you feel really different? Well, some of the stuff that you described today, I re I really resonated with. Like when you said, "Okay, I use my sleep to kind of think." Okay, um, you look back in your memory in the past, and then you kind of see how you felt about those memory. You know, I I do that all the time. Um, mm -hmm. also like going with your body, right? Like, okay. Like I feel this way about my, let's say my, my leg. Is there something mm -hmm. wrong with my leg? Like what happened in my leg? You know, like kind of like thinking about like your physical body also. So I, yeah. I, I have very good body awareness also. So I think so do you just based on your description, like, you know, how you feel on your body and also how you mm -hmm. feel with your emotion. Um, mm -hmm. so I resonated with those when, when you said those things, um, I did not resonate with wallowing. I don't get stuck in, in, in that like loop in, inside my, my feelings uh, just because, because I do have sleep last. So um, I, I don't get stuck there. Um, I did notice I can use sleep though. So I, I've always wondered if I was really sleep last because um, whenever I'm driving or if like, like I, I, it, it's really weird. I had to be in a vehicle for this to happen. Like it has, I have to be either on a plane or a, like a car driving or a bus, but
but like when, when I'm in a vehicle and it's moving, I can sleep process really well. But like when I'm mm. not in a vehicle, I cannot sleep process. Like, I don't know why, but it, it's really weird. Like, mm. but as long as, so if I, that's why when I drive, I don't listen to music now because I, I want to use my sleep, right? So mm. maybe it's because the vibration somehow triggers some sort of, sort of response there. I think, I think the, the, the biggest reason is like, I feel like when you're not doing anything, you're wasting your time. So like for me, mm. I have play as a savior, right? So I'm always doing something. I actually have trouble mm. with sleep, like the actual physical sense of sleep. Like I have poor, very poor sleep and I, I don't get enough rest. But um, I feel like when I'm in a vehicle, I feel like I'm being productive. Like I feel like I'm moving. And because I'm moving, mm. that's, that's when I kind of, my subconscious gives me permission to use sleep. I know it's weird. It's like, mm. it doesn't make any sense. But because we're moving already, then that's okay. I can go use my sleep now because I'm not wasting time. <laughs> I know it sounds very weird, but that's that's kind of like yeah. the thought in my head. Yeah, yeah. I just had an idea that, that or um, now that um, also that why I'm talking quite um, general yes. is that I want to be um, as good use to the tribe as possible because I'm if I'm going too much into detail people will have to put out the, like take out uh, the anecdotal, the, like the, the good parts out of it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I was, yeah. But I, I was, I was, I was really hoping that you went a hundred percent just on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would have to know more to, to do that for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it's okay. No worries. Because like, you know, I, I just noticed like sometimes I interview people of, you know, different animal stacks and I, I, I'm, I'm learning a lot actually interviewing you. So I'm like, oh, okay. Because I, I feel like mm -hmm. if I were to do this interview again, I would, I would talk more than you at the first, first half maybe. Because I feel like... Sorry, you would? Sorry, you would? I would, I would talk more the first 20 to 30 minutes than, than you. Because like, mm -hmm. I, I just noticed like with someone with play last, uh, especially someone that also has blast as a demon, they need a lot of information first that they can use to 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 to, to talk, and and like 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 when I when we started the interview and I put you in a spot right away, I I felt like you didn't have that much information to work with, so I I felt like mm -hmm. like I felt like it would have been better if if had I um had I done all the talking for the first 20 minutes, you know, and then you have so much information afterwards, then you can use that as, as your tool. Too. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Because I'm sitting and consuming you and your, your world of concepts. Yes. And your sort of your inner world, uh, how you see the world and to know what you mean when you ask things, because it's not, I mean, I see too, sometimes too much possibilities there. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but that's okay. That's okay. You know what? For for me, it was a learning process, and I learned a lot from you, and I think that's that's really cool. Um, so, yeah. you know, don't think don't think badly. Like you know, like you know, we didn't. It was yeah. kind of, you know, don't think like oh, you know, it's difficult to talk at first. I, I mean, because like I, mm -hmm. I noticed talking to you, I, it seems to me that you you'd rather listen than talk. Like first of all, like you you mm -hmm. feel like I, I notice when you're most engaged when you're listening. <clears throat> that's when you become like you know like super focused you know yeah but then when you have to talk like you get really uncomfortable like i, I noticed that you know <clears throat> and 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 that's okay you know like that's that's perfectly cool you know like that's fine that you know i have a lot of infp friends right so i like for me it's like ah, okay like it's not for, for me it's, yeah. not, it's not weird it's like normal like i've seen this i'm like ah yeah normal you know I, <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah yeah so don't don't, don't sweat over mm. don't sweat over it <laughs> Um, do you have any uh, final questions before we, we wrap this up? Or we're... No. <laughs> Thank okay. you so much. All right. Yeah. Thanks for doing the interview, Sarah. And uh, I'll just say goodbye to everyone. And then I'll Bye. pause the recording. <laughs>